You've seen one of these things before, right? Yeah, it's a bridge. <laughs> so you know that bridges connect two physical locations and facilitate movements between them. Okay, now replace that bridge with a blockchain bridge connecting two different blockchains and you will have the basics of blockchain bridges down. And now that the blockchains are connected, the transfer of tokens and data between them is now possible. So let's find out why we need blockchain bridges, how they work, and the different types of bridges that are available. Also, stick till the end of the video to find out one of the biggest heists in the history of cryptocurrency, which involved a blockchain bridge. All right, let's begin. Okay, so let's start by finding out why we need blockchain bridges in the first place. So ever since new blockchains started popping up after the creation of Bitcoin's blockchain in 2008, there has been a prevailing problem, and that is a lack of interoperability. So there's always been a need to solve this problem to ideally make the whole crypto ecosystem work as a team instead of existing like islands. And having the ability to move your assets to different blockchains means that you get to enjoy the benefits that may be native to certain ecosystems. So let's have a look at some of these benefits. Okay, so the first benefit is that you may be able to enjoy cheaper and faster transactions. So let's say you have ETH on the Ethereum network, which has its own flaws like high transaction fees and slow throughput. So you could choose to move your assets through a bridge to Polygon, which is much faster and also cheaper. So by moving your ETH to Polygon, you get to save money by trading tokens for a fraction of the cost you would incur on the Ethereum network. So the second benefit that comes with blockchain bridges is the ability to explore the blockchain ecosystem because this allows you to enjoy products like decentralized applications or dApps that only exist on other blockchains. So for example, Orca is a DeFi protocol that is only available on Solana and supports a wrapped version of ETH. You can watch this video right here where we explain how wrapped tokens work. But essentially, tokens are wrapped to allow them to work in a different ecosystem. Okay, so back to our example. So if you find the interest rates or products offered in the Orca protocol appealing, you may decide to port your ETH to Solana through a bridge to enjoy the benefits offered by the protocol. And this could also be the case for protocols that exist on multiple blockchains, like the popular lending protocol Aave. So say you've been using Aave on Ethereum to lend USDT, but notice that the interest for the same coin on Polygon is higher. Well then, you may choose to move your assets to Polygon and take advantage of the higher interest there. Okay, so then another benefit has to do with scalability. Just like users, developers that create products on the Ethereum network have had negative experiences due to the fees and speed. So you might ask, well, why do they choose to build there in the first place? Well, since Ethereum has been there for a longer time than its competitors, there is a factor of network effects. This is when a product, in this case Ethereum, becomes more valuable when more people use it. And many people using it, there comes liquidity, which is a measure of how easy it is to convert one asset to another. But now with blockchain bridges, developers don't have to trade off these important benefits for speed and lower transaction costs by building on a different chain as users can easily move their assets from the original chain to other blockchains where the same tokens can be processed faster and at a lower cost. Okay, so those are the benefits. So Let's go a little bit deeper and find out how blockchains actually work. So let's take a practical example. Say Maureen has her assets on Ethereum, but she wants to try out Solend, a lending and borrowing platform on Solana. So Maureen will need to transfer her ETH to Solana through a bridge. So the bridge may lock the three ETH on Ethereum and mint new ones that can run on Solana. So as you can see, the total number of circulating ETH remains constant because while the three ETH will still be on Ethereum, they will be locked so that the equivalent number of ETH will be available for Marine on Solana. Now, after some time, if Marine wants her original ETH back, through the bridge, she will burn her Solana compatible ETH to release her locked ETH. So 
Now that you have the full picture of the whole process, you'll notice that the ETH isn't actually moving, right? It, rather, it gets locked and you get access to a similar amount that is compatible with another chain. Now also, while different bridges have similar functions, what happens in the background might differ depending on the mechanism they use. Now the example that I've covered is one of the few mechanisms bridges use, though generally bridges can either be centralized, commonly known as trust-based, or decentralized, commonly known as trustless. Okay, so let's start with trust-based bridges. As the name suggests, you are essentially trusting your crypto in the hands of a centralized entity. So you have to give up control of your assets as they act as third parties that verify transactions and convert your coins into another cryptocurrency. So you must have encountered WBTC or wrapped BTC before. So basically, it is a product of a centralized entity that takes BTC and wraps it in an ERC-20 contract to make it function like an Ethereum token. So the advantage of using trust-based bridges is that they are cheaper and quicker. Now, on the other hand, we also have trustless bridges, which depend on algorithms to operate, thereby removing the need for a third party. So they are decentralized, just like blockchain, with individual networks contributing to the validation of transactions. However, being decentralized has its own flaws. One of them is that the service may be freelance based. So basically the validators are paid to only process your transactions. So in case of a problem, they may not be of any help to you. Okay, so then on to the big question. Are blockchain bridges safe? Well. Look, it's important to know that when it comes to crypto, your capital may always be at risk and bridges, they're just no exception, especially since successful attacks on blockchain bridges have become, unfortunately, a common occurrence. But let's talk about the biggest cryptocurrency theft of all time that involves a raid on the Ronin network bridge, which is an exchange that allows Axie Infinity video game players to exchange their in-game tokens for other cryptocurrencies. So what happened was the attackers stole the private keys required to authenticate transactions and transferred assets worth 614 million at the time to their own wallets. The second biggest heist, which occurred in 2021, also involved a blockchain bridge where the attacker stole assets worth 611 million, which he later returned. And you'll never guess the reason he gave for the successful hack. He said that the hack was just for fun and he was just keeping the assets safe in his personal wallet. Well, there are other multiple hacks as well, so there is a clear problem here that needs to be addressed, unfortunately. But apart from the downsides, blockchain bridges bring interoperability, an important factor in driving blockchain technology forward. So allowing different terms and blockchain protocols in the space to work together will fuel innovation, which will in turn accelerate user adoption. Well, let us know in the comments if you've used a blockchain bridge before and your thoughts on the technology. Well, remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on our socials for future alpha. See ya.